Hello, my name is Emma Kemp, and I'm very excited for this opportunity to continue um, sharing more about myself personally and professionally. Um, I was super excited whenever I read these questions because I think that they offer a really good range of learning more about my personality while also um, what assets I can bring to the table um, as an intern. So just kind of jumping into it. Um, first question, when I was a kid, I really aspired to be Abby Wambach. Um, if you don't know who that is, she was a member of the women's national soccer team for the U.S. Um, for years. Like, I think she was on the team for like 10 years. Um, and so I grew up playing soccer. Um, she just was such a rock star. Like, I remember as a kid watching her on the field and being like, man, like, she is so good. So, like, obviously I wanted to be her because she was so skillful. But then also just her as a person. Um, she was a very strong-willed individual. She never showed weakness. She always had her game face on. And I think that there is so much value and strength to that. Um, and so, you know, growing up watching her play and, like, there was this one time whenever she cut her head open on the field because, like, she got hit in the head. She got her head stapled right there on the field and just continued playing. And, like, while that probably wasn't safe, it just showed how strong she was. And so seeing that and being able to be like, man, there are people like that. And especially as a woman, like, there are women like that. Super cool to me. And um, she was just such a good role model of, you know, being kind to people, but also, like, putting in the work and, like, making sure that you are looking out for yourself as well. Um, I just think that's an incredible value to have. Um, and so, yeah, she was awesome, still is awesome, and I still look up to her, um, even though I don't play anymore and neither does she. Um, but, yeah, so that's my answer to the first question. Um, question number two. I have had a couple of experiences working with some individuals that um, were less than friendly, um, unfortunately, but um, in particular, um, there is one situation that stands out the most to me. Um, back home, I work as a physical therapy technician at a clinic, and I work seasonally, so only during the winter and summer months, and I remember um, two seasons ago, I went home, and there was a new technician that was also there for the season, and so I was super excited because, you know, the more help, the merrier, but um, it was his first job as a physical therapy tech, and so um, that is kind of a really hard role to just kind of like jump into. There's a lot of um, anatomical knowledge that you need going into it, and just if you don't have experience, it's really hard to get um, used to it and get accustomed to it, and so I came in, and I was like ready to go, you know, like I'm here for the season, like let's get into it. But he um, was kind of having a hard time keeping up. And so I found it very difficult to work with him because he just didn't really like know what he was doing. And so for me, um, I was kind of like losing patience with him. I was like, man, like, why does he not know these exercises? Like, how does he not know how to use the equipment? Things like that. And then I just kind of realized that I was being very stubborn and not understanding. And so being able to take a step back and realize like, okay, he needs someone to like walk with him through it. Like we can't just leave him to be independent just yet. Um, that was definitely something that helped me grow um, as a coworker because we had the same position, but I definitely found myself feeling like, oh, like I'm better than him. Like I know more than him. And it's like, well, of course you know more than him. Like you've been here longer. And so learning how to be very um, understanding and just like kind um, in a stressful like environment like that, that was definitely something that helped me grow as a person. And it actually ended up being very beneficial for our relationship. We ended up becoming very good friends um, after the first couple of weeks of him working there. And so that was really cool because, you know, it helped me self-reflect on things that I could do better while also helping bettering, um, helping better someone else. Sorry for the stuttering. But um yeah, that um, definitely started out a little bit bumpy, but um, ended up being amazing, and I'm still friends with him, so it worked out great. Um, to answer the third question, three things that are most important to me in a job would have to be the culture of the job, the values of the job, and then also empathy. Um, culture and values kind of go together. Um, culture is kind of more company-specific or company-broad um, of, you know, what are the... I don't know, what are the environments of the company um, from section to section? And so, like, how do um, certain sectors work together? And, like, is there a superiority complex? And, like, that sort of thing. Like, just how does the company function? Um, I think culture is huge because um, if you don't, you know, necessarily feel like you fit in at a culture, that's going to affect how you work and the way that you are successful and um, the standard you hold yourself to. So, you know, being able to fit into a culture is um, super important. And I think that we need to have like a accepting and inviting culture um, everywhere we go. So definitely in the workplace, that is very important to me. Um, values go hand in hand with that, just in the sense of, 
if you don't agree with company values or if you are having a job where it's like, oh man, I don't like actually care about that, that is 110% going to impact the way that you fulfill your responsibilities and your duties um, for the job. And so finding a company in a position that um, has that duality of culture and values that I agree with and I aspire to better myself with, um, that is super important to me because I think that is how you grow, not only professionally, but also just as a human being. Um, and tied along with that is empathy. I think that this is more of just like a, you know, human nature type thing. Um, the more understanding and forgiving we can be, the better. Um, I kind of touched on that in my answer to the previous question, but you know, we all make mistakes. We're all human. Um, not every day is going to be the best day ever. So the more that we can be empathetic and understanding of whenever we miss the mark, I think that um, just kind of opens the door for growth. And so I think having a job in a position where empathy is expected um, is very important. And I would love to, I don't know, make people feel loved and appreciated with empathy. Um, so I think finding a way to do that in a career is awesome. Um, to answer the fourth question, um, I have had actually most recently a very emotionally driven situation that was given to me. Um, I serve as a vice president of my sorority here at the University of Oklahoma. And, um, you know, with this, I am responsible for executive and disciplinary hearings. And so a few weeks ago, I was given a incident report form um, where our president actually violated some bylaws. And so this definitely affected a bunch of our chapter members um, very personally and emotionally. And so they were coming at me with all of their feelings and just the way that they were thinking about the situation at hand. And so it was very emotionally driven from their end. And all understandably so, you know, um, their feelings are very valid and coming from a safe place. And so hearing all their concerns and just their thoughts on the situation, I was like, okay, yes, I need to understand where they're coming from, but I also need to be able to take a step back and approach this from a very logical and, um, you know, procedure focused, um, you know, thought process. And so um, going into it, it definitely was a time where it was like, okay, like I need to take off my friend hat and put on my exec hat. Um, and I don't necessarily enjoy putting on my exec hat because a lot of the times that means I have to have uncomfortable conversations with people, um, especially whenever I have to tell them that they did something that, you know, is not necessarily the best. Um, people get very defensive, especially in college. Um, very, you know, difficult conversations have to be had sometimes. And so going into the situation, I knew that that was going to be one of those conversations. And so being able to approach it very logically um, definitely helped give me a leg up because it ended up being very beneficial in the end. Um, it wasn't necessarily fun, but it was a conversation where we left and we were like, okay, you understand what you did and I understand what you did. And so now let's, you know, move forward and try to be better. And so it ended up being very well um, taken, which was a nice little touch on top. And so um, while it was difficult and while it forced me to, you know, take a step back and really evaluate the situation, definitely approached it with logic and got the job done. So that was good. Um, and then to answer the last question, um, this was kind of difficult for me because I'm sure I've designed a lot of things that I don't remember, but probably the one that stands out the most to me was in fifth grade. Um, I was part of a like special, like extracurricular class where we had to develop a business model for a career that we really wanted. At the time, to little 10 year old Emma, she really wanted to be an architect. Definitely not that anymore. Um, but I had to design a business model and kind of a rough draft blueprint of what I wanted to design, um, literally design as an architect. And so doing that, um, it was definitely something interesting because, like, why are you having a 10 year old make a business model? But um, it, kind of opened the door for me to hold myself to a really high standard. Um, I think that was kind of the first time that I saw myself being a high achiever and um, just a hard worker. Um, it was something that not all my friends were doing. And so I definitely had to find it within myself to, you know, take the time to actually complete this assignment and that sort of thing. And I designed this whole model of like, okay, like this is the school I'm going to, these are the licenses I'm going to get, this is where I'm going to end up. And like, I had this big, huge dream of like ending up in Chicago and being this huge architect. And while I designed this like awesome future and career plan for myself, not following it anymore, but it definitely did show me that like, you know, the sky was the limit sort of. And so being able to see that firsthand as a 10 year old and then still believing that here 10 years later, um, really cool. And so, 
yeah, it definitely was kind of weird and like unexpected that I would have had to design that. But I'm um, looking back on it now. I'm thankful for that opportunity because it definitely has helped mold me into who I am today. Um, and I think just all of these questions to kind of open my eyes to, you know, how I got from point A to point B of my personality and just the standards that I hold myself to. Um, and so I hope that I was able to share those standards with you and that you were able to get to know me more um, as a student and as an aspiring professional. And I look forward to talking with you in the future. Thank you.